Since AMD debuted the Zen architecture back in 2017, there have been two upward trends for the company. The first is performance, and the second is its stock price. And as many of you know, Zen 2 has continued this tradition, providing a significant performance uplift compared to its predecessors. My name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be previewing the performance of the Ryzen 9 3950X, along with the two Threadripper processors that have been so far announced, along with its accompanying platform. I'd like to say I'm sorry for the watermarked images. Unfortunately, when you download the slides from AMD prior to the NDA being lifted, the company watermarks the images. And uh, this is also an article, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, it is, of course, found in the video description. I'd like, however, to first start with the Athlon 3000G. This is a cheap the first product though I'd like to start with is the Athlon 3000G. I feel that this CPU is going to be a fascinating product for folks who are building a streaming system, an entry level gaming system, or a small form factor, perfect for streaming games from let's say a higher end system in a different room. AMD is using the Athlon 3000G to take the fight to Intel's Pentium G5400 CPU. The AMD Athlon 3000G uses Zen Plus cores, not Zen 2. However, new to the Athlon budget series, AMD have opted to fully unlock the overclocking potential of this chip. It runs at 3.5 GHz out of the box, a 300 MHz nod in the clock speed alone compared to the Athlon 200GE. The CPU has just two cores but four threads and is paired with Vega 3 graphics and operates at a pleasing 35 watts. In AMD's own internal testing in games such as Rocket League, Fortnite and CSGO, they claim it has double the speed of Intel's Pentium 5400G. While in typical day-to-day -day tasks such as MP3 conversion, it's about 25% faster. AMD will charge you $49 US for this entry-level processor. That's about $20 less than you could expect to pay for the Intel equivalent. Going back to the overclocking side of the equation, AMD once again claims that you can crank the clock frequencies up of the 3000G to 3.9 GHz. Here AMD decides to include a few additional benchmarks which were omitted from the non-overclocked results. Photoshop and Premiere by Adobe both make an appearance, and at stock clocks the Intel CPU does pull ahead. However, overclocking the Athlon 3000G to 3.9GHz means that AMD squeezes out wins with Adobe's suites as well. Back at E3 2019, AMD confirmed the rumours. They informally announced a Ryzen 3000 series CPU with double the core count over previous flagship mainstream models. The 3950X then sports 16 cores and 32 threads. I'm sure at this point, AMD would like me to say something along the lines of they delivered as promised, or disruptive performance, or any other marketing buzzwords. And while I'm normally loath to say such things, it's very difficult to not actually agree with them. This is exactly what it says on the tin. A disruptive CPU, 16 cores, 32 threads, providing a not insignificant HEDT-like experience. Let's take a look at the performance and specs. Going by the numbers for a moment, say it with me folks, we have 16 cores, 32 threads, cranked up to 3.5 GHz for the base and boosting to 4.7 GHz. You are likely aware that AMD went with the chiplet approach for the Zen 2 CPUs, and as you can see in the image, there are two CPU chiplets cuddling up against one another, and manufactured on the 7nm process of TSMC. Watching over them and diligently taking care of their information and communication needs is the I.O. die. With the Ryzen 7 3700X, for example, we only have one CPU die present with eight CPU cores enabled. With the Ryzen 9 3900X, there are two CPU triplets, but four of the cores are disabled in total, giving us the total of 12. With the Ryzen 9 3950X, all of the 16 cores are enabled. 
and this also probably is just about the best quality silicon that you can get your hands on for the mainstream Ryzen 3000 series, as it features the highest core clocks, boosting up to 4.7 GHz with just a few of its cores loaded at 105 watts. Essentially, this is about 1% faster single core than the 3900X. AMD have put together a Cinebench R20 result to demonstrate this, testing a single uh, core workload with the Ryzen 9 3950X being 22% faster than the 2700X in this particular benchmark. Thanks to the clock speeds though, the CPU also is a single percent faster than the 3900, but also distances itself from lower core count siblings as well, such as, let's say, the 3600. However, I don't think anyone is going to drop 750 bucks on a 16-core CPU to squeeze a few extra points out of Cinebench R20. Instead, AMD were emphasizing the clock speed superiority of this silicon. However, to me, the gaming benchmarks better back this up. AMD compares the 3950X against Intel's i9-9900K, as well as Intel's i9-9920X. The 9920X is currently Intel's fastest 16-core CPU, though Cascade Lake X will launch soon. But AMD would likely say that we don't think the situation would change much as a response to this. They are comparing it against the i9-9900K, however, and, well, the KS is coming out, which does crank the clock speeds up to a little bit, so this would obviously marginally improve gaming performance. Naturally, overclocking any of these parts, particularly the 3950X, is also an entirely different discussion. Either way, though, the benchmarks here tell the story, 1080p gaming, of course, putting the strain on the CPU. The 3950X is about on par with the 9900K. Unfortunately, AMD have omitted the FPS on Intel's parts. But I would say when it comes to gaming workloads, there's probably going to be not much more than the margin of error differences between these CPUs on average. Oh, and if you're wondering, the GPU that they were testing with apparently is an RTX 2080, not the TI. Intel can probably say that they have the win with gaming with the 9900K, particularly when it's overclocked to 5 GHz, but let's face it, not by much. The 9900K is a cheaper part, but you can also argue that it exists on an essentially dead platform. It is content creation that the Ryzen 9 3950X really shines, and this is where things get really messy for Intel. AMD do love to show Cinebench results, and honestly this particular workload does show their CPUs in the best light possible. In isolation then, these results alone wouldn't be that impressive. However, when you add in Handbrake, which is up to 18% faster, DaVinci Resolve, which is 46% faster, and LLVM Compile Times, 39% faster. During Cinebench R20, AMD claims to be about 30 watts lower than Intel from the socket. This is measuring power consumption of the whole system from the wall, although of course the GPU is not being loaded with this test. As for the 9920X, yeah. I will also point out that AMD are expecting you to pair the 3950X with a high-end liquid cooler, and it's highly recommended by them. But let's just be honest, I don't think many people were expecting to pair this with anything close to a stock cooler anyway. Oh, and AMD also stresses that you will need to update your AGISA code, so 1.0.0.4 at least, before plonking in your 3950X. New BIOSes are rolling out right now, and honestly I've been inundated with emails from Biostar, MSI, and so on and so on, all letting me know they're pushing out their new BIOSes with haste. And this does of course bring a myriad of different improvements as well, including, but not limited to, improvements in boot times and performance. Oh, and there's also an eco mode for the Ryzen 3000 series too. In this example, we can see the power consumption is 44% less with the Ryzen 9 3950X. But in Cinebench anyway, of course, this does come with a performance impact. 77% of the performance remains. Unfortunately, AMD did not disclose the clock frequencies here. 
But then again, if you're doing less demanding tasks, say you're watching stuff or playing less demanding games, there's probably no harm enabling this and reducing your power consumption and temperatures. And now let's move over to the part of the video I suspect many of you have been waiting for, the third generation of Threadripper processors and its accompanying platform. AMD kicked off this part of the press call by informing us that the Threadripper CPUs, the HEDT market, has been extremely lucrative for them, raking in about 1.2 billion US dollars over the past few years. This is an extremely impressive number. Bear in mind that the company, prior to the launch of Threadripper back in 2017, did not have any such product. So in 2016, for example, they were completely and utterly absent in this market, allowing Intel to reign supreme. As of the time that I'm recording this, AMD are disclosing details of both the Threadripper 3960X along with the 3970X. The Threadripper 3960X is a 24-core, 48-thread monster and has 140 megabytes of cache, clocked up to 4.5 gigahertz with base frequency of 3.8. These CPUs are monsters and as such comes with a TDP of 280 watts, 30 watts higher than the second generation. Oh, and assuming your cooler on the X399 can handle this TDP, you'll be pleased to know that it does work on the STRX40 socket. Its bigger brother, though, is the Threadripper 3970X, which AMD teased would be up to 32 cores, 64 threads, and indeed, it contains the same 4.5 GHz turbo speed, though the base frequency is 100 MHz less than the 3960X, so just 3.7 versus the 3.8. Cache total is 144 megabytes. If you're wondering, AMD is counting the level 2 cache in this total. And of course, because 8 of the CPU cores are disabled with the 3960X, well, that is why you're missing the 4 megabytes, because each of these cores houses 512 kilobytes of its own level 2 cache. The price for these parts isn't cheap. The 3960X with its 24 cores is going to run you 1400 bucks, and AMD will be asking 2000 US dollars for the 32 core part. I'm sure some of you are wincing at these prices, but don't forget that the i9-9980XE was launched at the same price essentially. Also, in the context, these chips are not too dissimilar from their ROM processors found in high-end server CPUs. The 7502 Rome part is a 32 core CPU and isn't far off 3000 US dollars. Moving on to the platform side of the equation, and the rumours were right, there is a totally different socket for TRX40 compared to the X399 platform. And this means, of course, that you cannot put a second generation a Threadripper processor, for example, into a TRX40 motherboard, and you cannot also put a third generation Threadripper processor into an X399 motherboard. So why have they chosen to do this? Well, there are several reasons. It comes down, though, to I.O. and scalability. For one, AMD have loaded the TRX40 platform with 88 PCIe lanes, though 72 of these are available. We'll get more to that in a moment. Robert Halleck also told us that there was built-in scalability into this socket that wasn't available to us on the outgoing X399 platform, end quote, but he said that AMD at the moment are not uh, going to disclose what this actually means, so unfortunately your guess is as good as mine right now. Looking at the TRX40 platform diagram, there are several things you'll spot. The first of which is the TRX40 is quad-channel, officially supporting 3200MHz RAM, and yes, it does support ECC, although that is down to the motherboard vendor. Unfortunately, I don't know the total supported amount of memory, because AMD are not disclosing that either at the moment. AMD have also increased the bandwidth to the chipset four times compared to the second generation X399 parts. This is because it's now using a times 8 link compared to the times 4, and additionally we have the bandwidth improvements of PCIe 4 versus PCIe 3. 
The platform was designed specifically to cater to high I.O. situations. So if you want to outfit your system with multiple GPUs for machine learning, while also putting in a whole bunch of fast SSDs for some VM work, well, go right ahead. Okay, well, if you drop 2,000 bucks on a CPU and more than a few pennies for your motherboard, how does it perform? The answer is pretty well, and that's putting it mildly. In AMD's own official slides, they're comparing the 3970X against the 3960X along with Intel's i9-9980XE. I will caveat this and say that the 10980XE is due out soon, part of course of Cascade Lake X, and apparently this will be significantly cheaper, debuting around a thousand bucks. This means Intel's platform will likely be cheaper, but feature less I.O. and probably less raw performance in multi-threading, although we don't have many benchmarks here, unfortunately. Also, in these benchmarks, AMD did not give us results for the 2990WX, and it would be nice to have a comparison with these CPUs. Verbally, Robert Halleck did tell us when briefing us that on average the performance uplift was between 40 and 60 percent, end quote, compared to the 2990WX, so make of that as you will. Either way, I can only say that the i9-9980XE gets trashed in these applications, typically falling between 40 and 50 percent behind compared to the Threadripper 3970XE. In applications which really love lots of threads, such as, once again, Cinebench or even V-Ray, the gap does widen. Judging purely on this limited selection of benchmarks, if you do want the fastest home workstation possible, AMD, they've got you covered. I'd also like to go back to the pricing side of the equation for the third generation Threadrippers. According to AMD, they expect the second generation of parts to act as the entry-level mainstream solution if a 16-core 3950X isn't enough. For example, you need additional I.O., or perhaps you need lots of extra memory or whatever other reason for your migration to a HEDT platform. There are a couple of issues with this, obviously because you are not uh, able to migrate from X399 to TRX40, you would essentially need to completely replace your main board as well. However, I do think this is a smart decision of AMD. Allowing users to pick up a cheaper CPU, we can presume of course there will be further price cuts to the second generation, although that's not 100% confirmed yet, when the third gen generation launches. Anyway, Hopefully, you have found this video informative. If you did, then of course, click the like button because it helps us out a ton and also subscribe to the channel for much more content. I'll also quickly remind you that this is also an article, so if you do prefer the written word, then you can of course find it linked in the video description. But with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.